what's up you guys welcome to the manga grove my name is christian without further ado let's jump right into bitcoin i am sorry if i sound a bit uh, breathless today i am sort of i think i'm falling sick however however we're gonna try and keep this one um as short as possible this one is going to be primarily on well price action sean and i have been giving you guys a lot on macro not just in terms of um, the charts but also in terms of the fundamentals right so today i want to keep this primarily based on price action because while prevailing price action is leaning more bearish i think that is abundantly clear and hey you know what majority wins um even in this regard right always or to the side of the overarching trend, which is bearish right now. But it's also about, TA is also about really understanding, forecasting rather, what could happen and what you need to keep your eyes out on, okay, in case things take a turn. So today, while the picture is bearish, I'm going to tell you guys what to look out for that is going to incite the next bullish turn, okay? So what the thing is that we have two very important candles that close today right? That is the weekly candle as well as the 40 candle. And I'm seeing um, a certain level that if reclaimed, will send Bitcoin back up to that 17k region. Okay, now before I begin, guys, it goes without saying that that like button goes a long, long way for the channel. So hey, it would really help if you could smash the like. But hey, if you want to also wait until the end of the video to see if you get any value from this, then by all means, I think that's very fair. And you can wait until the end of the video. So without further ado, let's jump right in. I'm currently on the 12 hour time frame. As many of you guys know, I did take a trade on Bitcoin around that 17.2k region. I got my bid around 17,190, which I got invalidated on because remember, I told you guys that, hey, my my trade, my invalidation is going to be primarily based on the 12-hour dynamic as well as the daily dynamic, and I got invalidated on both those regions, okay? Price closed below both those regions. I had to get out of my trade and take the loss. So, yes, I did take a loss. I got to live to fight another day, and that's a part of it, right? Um, and it's always about living to fight another day, and that's why invalidations are very important. That way you set a baseline for yourself as to where you are wrong. Ultimately, it's about protecting your equity because that's essentially what's going to keep you in the game. So that's a quick update on that trade. So now as far as living to fight another day, what is the next day? What is the next trade? And like I said, while everything is leaning bearish, I'm going to give you three things um, that's that's pointing to further downside for Bitcoin, okay, at least in the shorter time frames. And I'm going to tell you about that one thing that's going to likely change the picture if we reclaim this level. Now, the three things that's, that's sort of uh, tilting Bitcoin bearish here is going to be found on the four hour time frame. So let's get on over to the four hour time frame. I'm gonna clear out my chart. I want you guys to focus on this price action right here. Okay, so now it's about really establishing the trend. Where is the trend sitting at right now in the four hour time frame? I think it, it is abundantly clear that we're currently in a downtrend. I mean, it, even a baby can actually spot this out, right? I mean, look at this. Okay, this is a downtrend. We've taken out all these lows right here. Okay, so that is a downtrend. Um, and another thing that's pointing to further downside is this very, very tiny pattern right here, which is a rising wedge, right? That's a rising wedge pattern. Okay, now a rising wedge on a technical standpoint, guys, allow me to just zoom into this to make this a bit more important than it seems on my chart. But anyways, a rising wedge pattern is a bearish pattern. However, what makes it bearish always, always, always is the break. Because so far, what we're seeing here is a series of higher highs and higher lows. That is not bearish in any, any instance. Okay, so it's that break of that trend that makes it bearish. Okay, now the measured move to this rising wedge pattern will likely take Bitcoin all the way down to 16.5k if it triggers. Please note my usage of words here. If it triggers, only then is it bearish. Only then will we expect 16.5k. So this is point one. Okay, this is point one in favor for further downside leading into the weekly close. Okay, the point two that is um, on the side of the bears is that now if I just zoom out of this four hour time frame, let's go zoom out here, get things into focus. Okay, I'm seeing that Bitcoin actually faked us out like it, it broke out of an order block and then it broke back into the order block. And this is the order block right here. Okay, this is the four hour order block that we're looking at. Okay, this is it. Um, if you guys want to take note of these numbers, by all means, go ahead and take note of these numbers. This order block, guys, comes in at around $16,764. Okay, that is the overhead resistance. And the underneath support comes in at around $16,417. Okay, so that is the order block. And as you can see, once again, I'm going to zoom into this picture right here. We broke out of it on that last two um, four-hour candles only to break back in. So we never got that confirmed close over that four-hour order block. 
All right, so now we're using that 16.7K um, region as overhead resistance. So this too is 0.2 on the side of the bears, okay, the order block. So now we have one pattern, which is 0.1. Let me just draw a very nasty arrow here. 0.2 is the order block. And now 0.3 that is also siding with the bears is actually going to be, be found on the Mango dashboard. If I take you guys on over to the dashboard, you'll see that I'm currently on the four hour time frame. And uh, Bitcoin USDT, top of my list, favorited. I should put an alert on here. I don't know why I don't have an alert. Bingo. And um, you can see that Bitcoin USDT is currently short. Okay, this short signal came in 2.6 days ago. And hey, if you took a trade on that, good for you. You're up by a good 3.87%. Volatility has died down, of course. But what's really, really um, standing out to me here is the volatility. Volatility flashing 64. Now that's pretty high on the scale, right? It goes from zero to 100, where 100 is max volatility or rather high volatility. I'm not gonna say max volatility. And zero is very, very low volatility. It means all that, that volatility has died out. We're getting like a lot of sideways action. Usually when volatility expands, we can expect a cool down on that trend. So right now if the trend is short and the volatility really expands, we can expect a relief rally. If on the other side, we have a long signal, right? Like we have on RAD USDT. I'm not sure what that is. I'm just giving you an example here. But if we have a long signal and volatility flashing 100, okay, this is a great example. In this case, we can expect a pullback, okay, where price comes down to support. Okay, so however, Bitcoin is saying that, okay, 60 for volatility, while it is high up there, it's not reached those really, really high numbers like the 86 or the 100s or the 90s. So what this is technically telling me that, okay, you know what, the trend is short, ball is 64. However, this number might be alluding to the bears still having a bit more juice in them. Okay, so they could take this baby down a bit further until volatility really gets up to those max numbers like 86, 90s. That's when we can actually expect a relief rally. Right now, what this is telling me is that the bears still might have a bit more juice. Okay, so this is another point on the side of the bears. Okay, so now getting back into the chart. So now we have three points. The pattern, the bearish pattern, which has not broken yet. The track back into that order block that we have going from 16.7K going all the, way, all the way down to 16.4K, as well as the trend on the mango dashboard. These are the three points on the side of the bears. But now I'm going to tell you under what conditions these three points get negated. Okay, I'm going to say three for dashboard. Okay, D for dashboard. So now these three points get negated if in the next 24 hours, I'm talking about leading into the weekly close, leading into the 40 close, because tomorrow we close two important candles, 40 and weekly. Okay, leading into the weekly close, the, all of these three points get negated if number one, take back 16.7K, basically out of that order block, that's going to be the first bullish point. Okay, the second bullish point. Now this is where I'm gonna get rid of all of these other nasty squigglies. Perfect, now that that's gone, now let's go ahead and turn on our mango ribbon because that's where the second bullish point comes into, into play. Okay, the second bullish point is gonna be right here. Notice how we have the 200 simple moving average swinging in right above us. Okay, this 200 simple guys comes in at around $16,826. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna mark that out with a line segment. Okay, because this has a lot of rel relevance on your higher time frames. If I just go ahead and mark out a line right there, Okay, notice how that is our four hour 200 simple moving average. So remember, point number one is first we want to first take out the 16.7k region back out of the order block. The second thing we want to do is take out the 200 simple moving average leading into the weekly and the four day close. Okay, one is going to cascade on to the other. And notice at that point, this rising wedge then sees trend continuation because once again, we have a series of higher highs and higher lows. Okay, this breaking out, breaking up from here is going to see trend continuation. Now let's talk about the relevance of clearing out these two levels and why this would likely change the picture because check this out. Now, if I take you guys on over to the four day time frame, okay, let me just get things into, um, into view properly and let's go ahead and just zoom in okay beautiful now notice that line segment that i'd marked out for you guys just now right basically lining up with the four hour 200 simple moving average that line segment guys also lines up with the 40 10 simple moving average now why is this important well for that let me just go ahead and zoom out of this picture i want you guys to notice price action against the four day 10 simple moving average okay let me just clear out all my lines 
There we go. Now throughout this entire consolidation, now guys, this was the bear. This is the bear market con consolidation, which we are still very much within, right? This came in from June 2022 all the way to well present day. Now first off, notice price against the 10 simple moving average. Every time we've come up against it, ever since the breakdown right here at around forty thousand dollars, we've used it as overhead resistance. Every time we've taken it out. Now this was the one instance that we actually took it out on. Okay, this came in on July 16th. We made our way all the way up to the 21 exponential moving average which was a good 20 percent if i recall correctly yes that was a good 18 17 18 percent to the upside that was the range at the very least okay now when we broke back down below the 10 simple moving average we made our way all the way down to once again grazing the lows at 18.2 k the local lows at the time okay notice how every attempt once again at the 10 sma was met with rejection until we took it back once again right here which came in on 20th of october and what did price do then used it as support and then trended all the way up to the 21 EMA and the Tenkin right on this um, on this local high right here. Okay, that I believe was a good 10% or so to the upside. And that was, okay, a good 11% to the upside. So now this is the first time since October that we've actually managed to take out the 10 SMA once again. Okay, so we had one 40 candle close over the 10 SMA. Now this is the second candle right here. So far, yes, I agree. It's looking a bit weak, but we'll have to wait on price action if if on tomorrow's close, we actually manage to reclaim that four day 10 simple moving average, which once again lines up with your four hour 200 simple, this picture would not be as bearish as your lower time frame actually suggests. So if you are someone who is gunning for a short trade, that's when I'd suggest being a bit more prudent on that. So you can take it, yes, but have your invalidations at all times. Okay, because if we take back that four day 10 SMA in the next 24 hours, I'm saying that that is going to be a relatively decent picture, at which point I will at the very least be looking for price to get back up um, to 17.2K. Closing over 17.2K, even on your da daily time frames, is going to be a good picture. Yeah, because at that point, I'm saying um, gracing that, that 21 EMA once again is going to be key, is going to be plausible at that point. Okay, that is once again on the books. That, that will come in at around that 18K region. So this is something that I need you guys to watch out on um, within the next 24 hours. Okay, so yeah, you don't have to wait too long for these things to play out. So now for those of you wondering, okay, Krisha, what happens if we close under the 10 SMA? What happens then? Well, simple guys, um, you're looking at the bottom of the range once again. So first off, I'll be gunning for the bottom of the order block, okay, which was on your four, four hour time frame. Actually, yeah, let's, let's look at um, bottom of the order block coming in at 16.4K all the way down to these lows right here at around 16.2K. Okay, that's it. So we can draw in, a, draw in a little box there. That's going to be your range. I'm not looking for lower, guys. I'm not looking for lower until we take out this wick low right here, okay? Because at that point, you're looking at the macro picture. This wick low is going to be what's important. Um, only when we take out that wick low, only then can you really expect lower. That wick low comes in at around 15,460. For those of you who watched my last video, you guys know that um, my thoughts on... Uh, price actually falling lower is diminishing as the days go on, right? For as long as Bitcoin actually ranges in this uh, region right here, I'm saying the chances of 13K Bitcoin diminishes every week, right? So um, yeah, this is, the, this is the price action that I'm looking for. This is what you guys need to be looking out for getting into tomorrow's close, the weekly as well as the four-day close. The key level that we're looking at is that 40 10 SMA, which comes in at around 16.8K. If you want to get a picture ahead of time as to what price is doing, get on over to your four hour time frame. First, look for price to clear the order block, which comes in at around 16.7K. Okay, and then look for it to clear the, the four hour 200 simple moving average, which comes in at around 16.8K. Okay, because that is going to give you that tip on where price is going to close tomorrow. Right? That way, when you're approaching your trades getting into next week, you're a bit more prudent. And for those of you enjoying today's match, well, enjoy it. I'll be enjoying it too. And if you're not going to be on your computer to manage your trades, especially if it's on the shorter time frames, um, I suggest uh, maybe, I don't know, consider waiting it out. Now, I know that I usually wait it out. But hey, if you have other contingencies in place, if you have your stop losses or whatever in place, then by all means. But yeah, I will not be trading while I watch today's match because I don't want any unexpected volatility to slap me in the face. 
right? So yeah, this is today's price action. This is today's analysis. If you guys enjoyed it, please, please smash that like button. It goes a long way, as I said. And um, I'll be linking um, a video that Sean did on the fundamental landscape. So you guys can go ahead and check it out if you want a bit more edge to all of your trade setups. And um, you also get some, you know, some, some additional information on his thoughts on the market. And yeah, with this, guys, enjoy your Sunday. I'll see you in the next update. Ciao.